Hey guys, well the uh, footage and the making of and the bloopers and all this stuff are being sent away for Suburban Nights to be turned into a DVD. Uh, so that's being made right now. And uh, But there's two things that I wanted to get on the DVD that I sort of forgot about. Um, so I'm just going to throw it in this video. Uh, one is just a real quick shout out because I promised this kid I would. Uh, when the Link costume came in, it came with these gloves that, they looked like just Garabit gloves. They were not going to work. So I was going to this con right before we were going to shoot, and I just figured, well, they have to have gauntlets there, right? I mean, everybody's dressed up like Link half the time. They have to, nobody had any gauntlets to sell, which I thought was so weird. Uh, you know, they had swords and everything, but no gauntlets. So I found this kid who was wearing this Link outfit, and he had these, you know, okay gauntlet. They're, you know, pretty cheap, but I mean, it, it worked. It worked with his outfit. So I went up to him and I just said, look, I don't know if you know who I am. He says, yes, yes, you have the nostalgia, Greg. I'm like, yes, um, this is going to sound really weird, but uh, how did you make those gauntlets? And he says, oh, I just took some brown socks, cut a hole in it, and sewed them together to make the little finger holes. I'm like, that's great. Can I buy those by any chance? And so literally, I bought these socks with holes in them uh, from this kid because I had no time to go and get other gauntlets. I couldn't order anything online because it would take too long. Um, so I just got it from this kid real fast and I promised him I mentioned it on the DVD, which like I said, I forgot to do. Uh, I think his name was Nathan Ash or Ash Nate, something like that. I apologize if I'm getting your name wrong. I think that's his name. I'm not sure. Made a promise. There it is. Okay. Now the thing you guys really want to hear. Uh, this was the idea that I had before I decided to do Suburban Nights. Uh, it was down to two choices. It was either this or Suburban Nights. And basically, we didn't go with it for, for a couple reasons, but I figured, what the hell? I might as well tell you what the idea was because I don't think we're ever going to do it. It was an idea called Ninjas vs. Pirates. And what it was going to be, all the sort of doppelgangers and all the uh, villains of thatguyglasses.com were going to come together and they were going to go after uh, sort of this ancient medallion, which it eventually turned into the Gauntlet Suburban Knights. But they're going to go after this medallion and they're going to be led by Insano and uh, Mechalinkara. Uh, and you're gonna think you're gonna have like Dark Nella in there. You're gonna have oh, who, who's some of the other villains? I, I'm, I can't think of the top of my head. But you're gonna have a lot of the villains from our videos. And what they did is that they went and they found someone who knew martial arts, and they were gonna go get him to teach them how to do ninjutsu, uh, so they could get this from the that guy crowd because they actually had it. Um, and they, but they didn't know it had any special powers, which I'll get to in a second. So, they learn martial arts, they go in, they kick the ass of the Back Out of the Glasses team, they get this medallion, and they're gonna use it, as we figure out, to actually bring back the ghost of Bloodbeard Joe. Now, for those who don't know, Bloodbeard Joe is a character from the How to Be a Pirate series, which is... It's kind of like Chuck Norris. I mean, just every most incredible thing in the world. People tell stories about him, about how incredible he is, and they're always over the top. Uh, so this was going to be used to try and bring him back, but the villains don't know that. They think it holds some other power. So they were going to use this to their own benefit. But that guy with the glasses team had to figure out how to get this medallion back. So they, they call upon the pirate from the How to Be a Pirate series, and he was going to teach them how to be pirates, because logically the only thing that can fight ninjas are pirates. So a lot of the movie was going to be them training for how to be pirates, and uh, everyone's going to have their own unique sort of pirate character. The nostalgia critic was going to be dressed up like uh, Jack Sparrow. He's going to be doing an impression the whole time. You know, and he's going to talk through his teeth every chance he could. You know, that that was going to be you know instead of Link, it was going to be Jack Sparrow. Um, now, the big reason we didn't go this route, well, A, we did figure that the fancy route was the better route, uh, but the other big reason was because uh, when Bloodbeard Joe came to life, because he was going to be resurrected, and he was going to whoop everybody's ass, it was going to be this really, really big scene, the only person that could play Bloodbeard Joe, in my opinion, was James Rolfe. He would have to be Bloodbeard Joe. I called him up, I said, would you be able to do this? And he says, I got, I got so much on the, the, the schedule here, I'll, I'll have to get back to you. So a lot of it was weighing on whether or not he was going to be able to pull this off. 
Hey, Colesbank says, I'm sorry I'm in a remake of Plan 9, the time you guys are going to uh, do this, and we couldn't really move the schedule around, so I said, okay, all right, so we sort of scrapped that idea, and honestly, it was probably for the best, because it's kind of, it's a, it's a fad, you know, Ninjas vs. Pirates, it might be dying soon, I mean, I don't know, or maybe it's still big, I'm not sure. Um, but it seemed like you were trying to start catching on a fad, and there were some possibilities, and we were going over some ideas, but the fantasy idea just seemed better. It seemed more self-contained, you could do more with it. Uh, so that's the route we went. But, yeah, I figure it's just fun to talk about what could have been, what we possibly were going to do. I don't think we're ever going to do it. Um, like I said, I think mostly because it is a fad. And we shouldn't just cash in on a fad. We should tell a story because it's a good story and try our best to keep it as self-contained as possible. So, um... Yeah, that's about it, guys. Just sort of wanted to share with you uh, the alternate version of what this was going to be. And like I said, the villains were going to be Insano and Mechalin Kara and, uh, you know, all the doppelgangers. So, yeah, even a lot of the producers don't know this was the idea we were going to go with. So it, it was pretty much down to those two. We went with Suburban Knights. Turned out great. A lot of people liked it. So, yeah, that's about it. Just wanted to give you the heads up on... Uh, on the DVD. It is coming out soon, hopefully sooner than later. It's sent out being made, and now I'm just repeating myself. So guys, thanks for listening, and look forward to more videos. Later.